we're very fortunate to be a Royal Yachting Association training centre, so we, we can do a lot of the RYA training and issue powerboat certificates and sailing certificates. But what we have recognised is there's a lot of things that are unique to each sailability group. Um, here on the River Dart we have very challenging tides. Um, both being a coastal location, boat skills have to be particularly good. And there are particular skills that we need from our volunteers um, to, to support ourselves in our local area. So we, we've worked very hard on um, new induction courses now. Um, I'm very keen that we get volunteers from all walks of life. We don't, in many ways, it's better if we don't have someone who has experience sailing. Uh, what we want is people who want to support disabled people and then we can train them and, and if they want to get involved in the water we can train them there. But at the same time we, it's absolutely essential that we are able to train people in disability awareness and first aid and all the other supporting skills as well. Um, so we're concentrating a lot of the moment on those skills that we need to support a disabled group rather than necessarily a sailing group. One of the problems we have is, and, and I think this is probably um, difficult for both charities and anyone involved in water sports, it, there's a generation now that, probably because they can't afford um, to get involved in the water, they're having to work extremely long hours to pay massive mortgages these days, so they don't necessarily have time for volunteering. Um, I have no problem getting volunteers who, like myself, are fortunate to be retired. But what I really need to do is attract younger volunteers. So one of the initiatives we're looking at at the moment, uh, we're very fortunate we've got South Devon College um, operate from the same marina. And they are a premier maritime training establishment. So they're looking to have um, Duke of Edinburgh's um, training schemes and then we're offering the opportunity for them to volunteer with us. It does mean that we need volunteers who can train them and make it worthwhile for them as well. So it's still a big investment, um, but we're hoping that we get that youth enthusiasm. Um, Dart Sailability has been running for 18 years and it was set up with a few families who were loaned or donated a couple of boats. And we seem to have lost touch with that young family element now. And I want to get back to that. Those families are still here, but of course they're all adults and grandparents. Um, I want the next generation to get involved in sailing. So we're looking towards that. Now, I, I, I was very keen, particularly as Dark Sailability, been um, putting together a certificate of achievement for powerboat training. Um, it's very much like the sailing certificate achievement which our way sailability already have. Um, but we wanted to be able to give disabled sailors any ability, the ability to get recognition, and particularly the schools that, that come, um, a five level training scheme that would give them certificates um, to show that they're learning to act as a crew, they're able to undergo various roles in the boat, they can tie knots, and ultimately they can drive the boat. What we needed was a boat that everyone could drive, and in the arc, our landing craft, we, we achieved that. We have a second hydraulic steering console, so anyone with very little movement or um, physical ability can helm the boat. When we were looking at our development plan, one of the things we realised we n needed to integrate with the community a bit more. We get a lot of financial support, fantastic support from the local community. Um, but our sailors haven't actually been able to join in. We have a sonar or two sonar Paralympic keelboats, so we're able to race in Start Bay under the Royal Dart Yacht Club's um, racing scheme and during the regattas. Um, but we didn't really have any, anything where our access sailors could get involved as well. So uh, we've now found that by using the landing craft, funny enough, as a committee boat, we're able to host able bodied sailing groups to come and race against us as well. And we've had team races where they've used our boats. Um, we have plans to get youth sailing involved as well. So we, we will race our accesses against some of their boats. Um, it's early days now, but we're finding it's, uh, it's really coming together this summer. One of the roles of the principal 
is to report to the trustees. Um, I see the principal as an, as an employee, but I think very often it does need the drive from the principal and the instructors to actually steer the charity. And one very good document that um, it's an essential business plan is to have a club development plan and to have a very clear aim and idea of what the purposes of the clubs are. Um, certainly for clubs like Dark Sailability where we've got to a stage where we have about um, a dozen and a half boats um, it's very easy to, to lose sight of what the core aim of the, of the charity is and you can only really do that with a, with a development plan. So um, I, I was very conscious before we bought landing craft and we've also bought new safety boats and sailing boats this winter that they were suitable for what my trustees and the members want, wanted. Um, so last December we had a, um, a, a day's workshop and uh, it was extremely well attended. Uh, it was about 50 members came and we just listened to what they wanted. Uh, fortunately, we had assumed quite a lot, but there was quite a bit that we hadn't thought about. Um, so we were able to use that to decide what where we would invest our funds in, in new craft.